Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back of this teardown lab. I decided, you know, to bite the bullet. I know I wasn't going to do this till uh, I was kind of ready with the whole Atari ST thing, but I just, I just couldn't help myself. I want to try to do this firmware using the GoTech uh, update software, and I found out where you get the software. I'll post the details in the comments below, but effectively, we're just going to use this interface save time. By the way, there's the details of the interface. Don't know if those numbers mean anything, but it's a 61861-50316. Could be uh, a year of date of manufacture, actually, that one. And um, that's the basic serial port, 3v3, TX, RX, ground, and 5 volts. So that's everything you need to know. It's sort of FTDI, 232R type chip, although there is a clock, who knows? It's got a crystal on it. So what we need to do is we need to just sort of solder a little bit on this board just to sort of make life easier because we need to connect these sort of serial uh, I.O. pins to here. And to do that, I'm going to put in some pin headers. So I'm effectively going to put pin headers in all of these. I'm just going to start with these, just plop them in like so. And then just solder them in from the back. But first, I must go and find some more. Alas, more could not be found of the sort of regular kind. Even though I know I probably got a bag of 2,000 of these somewhere, I found this and this looks more interesting. It does require a bit more manhandling because, of course, it's definitely not going to fit. But it is a nice right angled one and it will fit when we're done. So I'm just going to cut it down. It looks like we need that many. So I'm just going to find some suitable side cutters. Are these my good ones? It's hard to tell. They look pretty good, so I'm going to be a bit careful with these. I don't want to ruin them, so but I think that's how many... Oh, it's hard to get in there, actually, even though they're sort of made to be snipped. They're not quite as snippable as they would have you imagine. So that's pretty darn good, but we don't need these last two pins. So I'm just going to snip those off on the board. I might just leave the pins in there, though. We, oh, I don't know. Should we just get rid of them? Yeah. So now you can see our connector is pretty much emulating the pins on the board, get the soldering iron on. If I do it right, I don't really have to remove it from here. I think I'll just flip it that way. Just looking at it, making sure I've cut the right ones. And indeed I have. So that's how it fits. These two pins here, just sort of zoom in a bit and show you. They're a bit, bit close, though, a bit close. So I might just bend them ever so slightly before I solder them down. So they're not touching the plastic, of the sort of floppy power connector. We'll work that out. We'll work that out in a moment. And then we can still be able to put our wires on. Soldering iron is warming up as we speak. I'm just sort of looking for my tweezers. There they are, hiding out. There is one pin here though that is just above the uh, floppy drive connector that got really mauled. I'm not quite sure what it is. Just looking at the board, um, it's definitely connected to our uh, arm chip here, so it's nice to have it. I'm wondering if my idea really isn't going to work. I might have been actually a lot better mounting this upside down. So I think I'm going to have to scrap it. Let's scrap this connector. Oh no, there we go. We us do it this way. We're going to use a combination. Rewind. Start again. So this is the thing we made. Not great. But what we can do, this is the, if we flip this around the other way, so we're going to use the actual solder pins as the connector pins and just solder the actual main pins in. We can put it in upside down and that will satisfy those four. And then we'll just take two pins from this sort of single pin header and then we'll have plenty. So the only thing I'm going to do there, you see this green bit here, I'm going to probably shift it down or at least 
attempt to solder these much further down because I want them to be much taller. Um, you can try moving that, but then all the pins might move. I'm just going to put it on the bench. Let's see if I can push it down. Sometimes you get away with it. Nope, I'm not going to get away with it. So I'm just going to be very cautious. Maybe just do a tack solder on one of these and then just take it from there. So have our solder. Plenty of it. Lovely leaded solder. And uh, just going to turn that upside down. Get in there with our soldering iron. Sort of this sort of one-handed soldering, so it's always a little bit precarious, but just got one little blob there, one blob to tack it. But what that now allows me to do though, is move that solder away. Work here with sort of two hands now. I've got the board really nicely anchored, so I can just sort of work it and then just sort of get that connector exactly where I want it. So I don't want it that tall. I just want it just protruding barely, which would be about there. Let that solder harden. That looks absolutely spot on where I want it. Let's let me treat my soldering iron to uh, a nice cleaning. How about that? It's earned it after all these weeks of doing this, those sort of horrible kits. And we'll just get in there and just solder these final few connections. So, say so the reason I want to do this carefully is the firmware updater looks like it looks like you can get the firmware. That's fine, but you need to modify the bootloader on this device to the custom one that the author of the firmware gives you. And to do that, apparently, it connects to the internet and then downloads it all off the internet magically. So it's obviously a copyright sort of mechanism to stop people just downloading the firmware and uh, cloning as many of these as they want in sort of the Far East. Which is fair enough, you know, the man's got to make a living. I don't think it's particularly expensive, but you know, prices may vary, so I'll let you have a look on his website, see what he's charging at the moment for it. Woohoo, that's hot. Let's get this other leg done. And that's it. All done. We can just put that all back together now. So that's basically all of the pins. I, I can't. I'm not sure what pins we actually need to attack at this moment because I know, I know we're need to going to get the five volts because the five volts from our PC are going to actually power the interface. Uh, we may need three V three. So I can I could see a five volt lead there. So that we've got five volt down there, and then sort of there's going to be an RX TX and ground. Once they're hooked up, you're pretty much good to go. Um, and then program this uh, bootloader. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm back and you can see I've daubed all over the back of the unit and I've put here the Twitter handle of my uh, mysterious Atari ST parts benefactor, Methanoid. Go and have a word with him about Ataris and Amigas. He's so knowledgeable on these things. And uh, yeah, so this is his drive in essence. I've got another one still waiting in the post. Um, just to show you what I've done, I've taken his uh, adapter and I've connected up as thus. So basically this blue wire and green wire are transmit and receive respectively. The yellow wire is on ground and then the orange wire is on five volts. Come back to the unit now. I've made a sort of map here. This is actually the little white floppy connector pinouts. You don't really need those. So everything you need are on this bit that I sold on earlier. So what you do is connect a jumper between J3 and VCC. Handily enough, the GoTech comes with a bunch of jumpers in this little baggie, so you can just borrow one from there. I've connected the green wires and blue wires to TX and RX. So you'll notice that they're sort of on the TX on the unit here is the RX on the unit here. So you are twisting them around. Then also you've got down here, just under here, the orange wire and the yellow wire, and they're just sort of the ground and the five volts accordingly just plug straight through. So when you plug this into your PC, that this actually gets powered up, but you won't see anything on the screen because while the bootloader mode pin is in there, nothing else will fire up. It just sort of looks dead. So what you do is you load up the software, put in your server name, username, password, and then that will actually connect via the internet to the sort of remote server and just download bits of the firmware. And you'll see it running the firmware numbers up the screen, you know, and you'll see in the little cutaway, I'll just show you a screenshot for that. And then when that's done, it just says done, great, you're done. Nothing actually just sort of shows on the unit. So what you do is remove the jumper 
if you can. If you've got good fingernails, I'm just going to pull this out like that. Remove the jumper. And what you can do, either plug this in back into your device or, uh, as I did, I just plugged the USB back in, so I just took the power. You know, you can remove the RX and TX lines if you want, but you can just get the power from the PC's USB port, and the device will show on the screen LDR, LDR. So what that means is that's your bootloader there, and what it's expecting is a firmware. And the firmware you put on a suitable flash drive, and all the instructions are there with the manufacturer's site, and uh, yeah, just whirs away, updates its firmware, and it's finished. So there you have it. That is basically, in a nutshell, how you hook up the GoTech to take the firmware from the uh, site listed below. Hope that's been of some use to you. If it has, please like this video. If you feel that way inclined, please subscribe. But what I'd really love you to do is comment down below or come and search me out at Twitter on at Back Office Show and say hi. Say hi, mate. Good day. That's all I need. I need, I need to live vicariously through your youth. As ever, thanks for watching.